guys, this is your next fun video. We're going to talk about creating and interpreting models of substances whose atoms represent the states of matter with regard or with respect to temperature and pressure. So first we're going to, oh this is fun 1.6, um, talk about the states of matter. So first we're going to talk about what matter is. Matter is made of atoms and molecules, and atoms and molecules are always in motion. They constantly are bumping into each other and move faster at higher temperatures. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about matter. States of matter are physical forms in which a substance exists. So that's just a fancy way to talk about things you already know about, like a solid, a liquid, a gas, and we're also putting in this category plasma, but um, we are not going to spend any time talking about plasma because um, plasma, as you may or may not know, would be like the sun or lightning or the northern lights. And like artificially, things that are plasma would be like neon signs, like a light from neon signs. So um, we're not really going to spend a lot of time talking about them other than that right there. But you should definitely write that down. So now we're going to talk about solids, liquids, and gases in different sections and talk about the properties that each of those have. So first we're going to talk about a solid. Solid particles are packed tightly together and they vibrate in place. Obviously we can't see them vibrating, but they are. Solid particles have a definite shape and a definite volume. As you can see in that square up above, all those little circles, blue circles, are the particles packed together. and they have a definite shape and a definite volume. You could take um, measurements and get information that you needed for those, like length, width, height, volume. All right, now moving on to liquids. We have liquid particles are able to slide past each other and have no definite shape. So what I mean by that is that they take the shape of the container. So like when we pour some water in that test tube, its shape is in the shape of the test tube. If we pour it in a beaker, then the shape's going to be in the shape that the beaker is. Or in a bowl, the liquid is going to take the shape of whatever is holding it because those particles slide back and forth past each other. Um, liquid volume has a definite volume. You know how to measure it. We pour in a graduated cylinder, we see how many milliliters there are. Um, volume also has surface tension, and that is a force that causes a liquid to form spherical drops. It's one of the reasons why we um, look at the meniscus when you're measuring a graduated cylinder because the water clings to the side of the graduated cylinder. And also when we talk about liquids we talk about viscosity. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. And so um, you might think like that's a strange word and I don't know what that means but you have seen it and you just don't realize it. For example, honey. Honey has high viscosity. Like when you pour it, it's real slow to pour out and it takes a long time to move. Sort of like molasses. Um, hence the saying, you're slow as molasses because it's got a high viscosity. It doesn't flow nicely. Um, whereas water, you pour it, it's got a low viscosity. It just dumps right out. Can you think of anything else that has a high or low viscosity, write one example of each next to your these two examples on your paper. 
All right, gases. So we've talked about solids, we've talked about liquids, now we're talking about gases. Gas particles move very fast and bounce off each other. Um, there is empty space between the particles. Gas has no definite shape or volume. So you think about um, gases that are invisible, you can't see them. They're moving at a high rate of speed. They're bouncing off each other. There's no real way to catch them or to take their shape or volume um, without other tools. So describing gas behavior or gaseous behavior, and no, I'm not talking about the kind of gases you guys pass in class. I'm talking about um, noble gases, gases that are on the periodic table, gases that you get to look forward to learning about. So first, um, we have temperature and how temperature affects gas and gases, gas behaviors, is that it's a measure of how fast particles are moving. A high temperature means faster move particle, no, fa faster particles. Higher temperatures equals faster particles, which means there's more energy. And if there's a low temperature, you have can suspect the opposite. There's going to be slower particles, and there's going to be less energy. That's very tongue-tied on that slide. High temperatures equals faster particles equals more energy. Low temperature equals slower particles equals less energy. That's how temperature affects gas. Now, we're going to talk about the volume of gas. Now we're going to talk about volume. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up and it can be compressed. So you can compress gas if you think of um, those spray cans that have air in them, compressed air, and you can spray it out, you know, to spray out your keyboard or the fan on the projector. Um, that's compressed air, and so you can compress the, the volume of that gas. Um, and the last thing, those are going to play a part in pressure. Temperature and um, volume will also play a part with pressure with gas. And what I mean by that is that pressure is the amount of force exerted on a given area. So let's talk about a tire, whether you're talking about a car tire or a bike tire. The more particles that are in there means the higher the air pressure is. So you're riding your bike, your tire gets flat, you go and you get to an air compressor and it blows up your tire. And so that puts more air gas particles inside the tire. So it has higher pressure because there's more particles in there bouncing around and that force of them is pushing out on the tire, making the tire full. When you have less particles, it means there's less air pressure. So look, I'm showing you the tire example. I want you to write this down. If the tire is flat, it means there's less particles. That means there's less force being exerted on the tire. There's less force being pushing out, so your tire is low. So when you're thinking about pressure, you can think about it about a car tire or a bike tire to help you understand the more pressure means the higher, the more, scratch that reverse, the higher the air pressure, the more particles there are, so the fuller your tire is. The less pressure in there would be the less particles, so the lower your tire is. Um... So write down any questions you have and we'll talk about this tomorrow.